guess. The same with the backside. Okay, so those are in place. And modifier on top. The symmetry flip. Mm hmm. Mirror W zero. Select tool. Okay, so that's looking all right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Nerm Smooth on it, and the Nerm Smooth. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm not getting an ice line display because it's a preview of a modifier. But you can see that the costume itself is looking pretty okay, and not only that, but everything looks like it's quads at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this symmetry modifier. First, take it out of Gnome Smooth. Uh, collapse the symmetry modifier, collapse to. It's an editable poly, but I want to check. I'm going to put. Uh, I'm going to use Nerve Smooth again, and right click in my viewport and hide unselected. So now I get a good view of the model I've just made. The first part of the costume. And it looks to me like everything is welded. If I put it in vertex mode, I can't see any extra vertexes around the center line, which will give me errors in uh, 3D Max. Oh, uh, sorry, in uh, ZBrush. Okay, take it out of smooth mode. Put it in its top level. I think I'm going to save this project. As costume, save as. Navigate to my external drive. Put in the projects folder and call it costume. And now send it to ZBrush. In ZBrush, the original model is selected and visible. Back to 3D Max. Go Z. Puts the, the model into Max, doesn't inject it into the scene, so go back to the original project. The uh, model is selected and append. And the model comes in at the right size and in the right orientation. OK, now we can have some fun sculpting this. And then going back between Max and ZBrush, to add uh, subtools to the um, to the character. Here's the finished model in ZBrush with uh, all the extra Z tools that have been added in exactly the same way that we added the bikini to the model. And each Z tool is at a very low resolution at its base resolution. I'm not going to show you how to texture the model in ZBrush, but I will show you where you can find great information on how to do it. We'll just turn on the textures so you can see what they look like. That's all the textures. Right, the next, uh, the next phase of this uh, model would be to create a low poly cage for it. Okay, so uh, how do we do the rest? Eat 3D. If you go to shop, train DVDs, 
high resolution sculpting in ZBrush through to low resolution character production and the low poly model looks like this okay you can see that the, the low poly encompasses the high poly but there is special consideration being taken for things that will be animated you see there's uh, rings around the eyes and the mouth and there's also all the joints have rings as well for animation so they'll deform properly but this is also a very good resource and it's from John Rush it's called um, pigbrain.com and it'll show you the best way to make joints for game model tutorials. A beginner's guide to proper modeling of joints for optimal deformation. That's the one we want. And then John will show you how to make the best joints for your models. Also John himself is a great resource I hardly recommend workshops, online workshops are really great. The reason being is it forces you to push yourself and you'll get a lot of information very quickly. Okay, this is this is the workshop I took. Game characters with ZBrush, April 2011, John Rush. Keep an eye on this one. Right, so we have information on how to texture the model and after that it's about rigging your model and then exporting the model to UDK. Okay, this is in Max with the cat rig system. You can get the cat rig to work with UDK. There's two ways of doing it. Well, there's, there's more ways of doing it, but um, the two ways I can think of at this moment are the first is the cat rig and the second way is to use skeletons from UDK you can import the skeletons into Max I'm fairly sure and uh, rig your model if you skin your model to the skeletons uh, that are in uh, the UDK then you can use all their animations so I found a resource uh, which used cat to go from Max into UDK. So just quickly about rigging. One of the things I found out about rigging before I used CAT, I haven't used CAT that much actually, is everything is on layers of course. It makes things a lot easier. The CAT system is pretty snazzy. You can customize the skeleton to resemble your figure because often when you'll be um, animating then you won't be animating with um, the character in view you will mostly be using the skeleton to animate and then preview it after you finished your animation or uh, after you finish a certain uh, to a certain stage okay so when I rig my characters I rig them with a an animation which uh, puts the joints into extremes so I can weight them properly. So this is the low poly on top of the skeleton. I have to put the skeleton in animate and you can see here in CAD you can animate in layers. So the first layer is the layer with my skinning animation on it so I'll make that a solo layer. And now if I move the timeline you'll see I get an animation so wiggling the toes knee joints then the abdomen twisting backwards and forwards head, neck, arm shoulder, 
hand, fingers, head again, fairly extreme. Okay, what that looks like without the skeleton. Okay, that's the head. Don't try this at home. <laughs> looks dangerous, doesn't it? Okay, the hand, shoulder. right back. Fairly good to form there. And also using um, John Rush's joint uh, configuration of his joint method. The joints are pretty good for a low poly model. It deforms quite well. Nice wiggly toes. One of the nice things about CAT is you can you can immediately use walk cycles. Um, this is a rather extreme character. You can see with that uh, horse-like um, forelock. Just have to select one of the bones, go to the motion panel. It's in animation. I'll take it out of solo. This isn't the walk cycle I use but you'll see that this cat motion oh yes I have to go in the cat motion layer cat motion layer globals and we have in globals we have a walk direction which is really great. If I put this on zero, she will walk forward. Okay, this isn't the walk I use, it's a bit stiffer. But you can see she's walking forward. If I change the direction to 90 degrees, she'll walk, I think, to the left. If I change it to 270, the other way around, which is very, very handy. Because those are the four walks you'll mostly be using, that strafe walk, walking forward and walking backwards. And you can export those out using a utility called uh, Actor X here. You can export your mesh with the skeleton and also uh, animations and import them um, directly for use in UDK. Okay, where do you find the information on that? Max Cat UDK. And here you see Mike is going to show us how to rig a character in Cat, how to use motion, Cat motion how to alter that motion and also how to export out of Max with the rig and the model and import it into the UDK. It's a pretty good deal I think. <laughs> and they're really clear, they're really good uh, tutorials. Okay, it's Mike O'Rourke. Also you can find him over at the UDK uh, forums. Okay, till the next video.